Hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to Cisco's third sponsor track session of the day. Um, I'm going to just quickly introduce our presenter today and keep things on track. Uh, we're going to be hearing from Miguel all about deploying and managing Kubernetes clusters in a multi-cloud world. Miguel Figueroa from our customer experience group. And take it away, Miguel. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you all doing today? All right, I see some familiar faces from yesterday at the booth. That's awesome. I see some friends of mine that decided to show up and not heckle. I'm watching. So uh, my name is Miguel Figueroa. I'm a software architect for customer experience. And today I'm going to discuss with you about deploying and managing Kubernetes clusters in a multi-cloud world. Uh, as we all know by now, K Kubernetes is the de facto standard these days in deploying out our microservices. So first, let's go ahead and decide on what is the definition of multi-cloud. So a multi-cloud approach enables customers to consume applications and services from two or more clouds where at least one cloud is public. So right there is a very curious thing because for the most part, when we talk about cloud, we mostly talk about Microsoft, talk about Amazon, talk about Google. But what about the cloud in your own data center? Right. So this is where Cisco comes in, trying to assist in that, that regard. So there are a number of challenges when you move to cloud. Plan and execute cloud first strategy, meaning you're just going to go directly to AWS, swipe your credit card, get EC2 systems up and running, and have at it from there. Implement and adopt cloud technologies, multi-vendor services and tools, uh, the expertise and skill set requirements in order to be able to deploy something like Kubernetes is another challenge. Uh, security and compliance requirements, as well as post-implementation and the management of that cluster. So here are some of our top customer use cases, is being able to not only evolve from on-premise to the cloud, but to have an ability to do them both. So today, Cisco has decided we're going to go and present a multi-cloud portfolio of various things that we do today that deal with cloud directly. And this is a very good screenshot because it tells you about our advisory services, connect services, protect, and also consume. With our public cloud side, Amazon is, of course, listed there, Google and Microsoft Azure. First thing we'll talk about is Cloud Center Suite. So Cloud Center is a multi-cloud management platform to securely design, deploy, and optimize anywhere. Today, it supports over 17 different cloud providers out of the box. It also includes uh, OpenStack, as well as all the various providers you have there. If you look at the right-hand side, the data center, we're talking about your, your own data center cloud system. Okay? As you can see from each one of those, from the data center to the cloud, uh, private cloud, public cloud, and the containers and services, the commonality is Kubernetes on all of them. On the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see all the various things you can deploy. So it does end-to-end -end life cycle management of all these various applications to all the various different multi-clouds. Multi so it gives you one integrated platform to work from, and it can do this with new as well as your existing applications. I want to show this screen here. Where are you? What's new? There we go. So here, we're looking at a, the workflow manager. So you can see from the left, this is the, uh, the, your application profile multi-tier application view. This is where you would build your multi-tier applications, model it, be able to go ahead and tell it in very precise details how you want this application to be deployed. You can see it's multi-tier. So when you look at a F5 load balancer, for example, at the top, you'll have Apache, you'll have all your various different parts of it. You can tell it at each level, this part stays internal on my own private cloud in my data center, and some of the other parts can be laid out and given to uh, Amazon, can be given out to Microsoft, can be given out to any other cl cloud provider, all from a single pane of glass. That's a key importance, right? Because today, the challenges that people are having, at least the customers that I've spoken to in the past, is if I want to deploy something on AWS, I have to bring up my console to AWS. If I also have a part that's using Google, I have to have a separate console open for that. 
what Cisco decided when working with our customers is that we're going to provide you with a single pane of glass view. So from Cloud Center, for example, you're able to deploy your applications, if they're new, if they're microservices, on various providers and be able to do it from a single view. You'll be able to know what's going on on all those cloud providers from this one interface. You won't have to go switching around to different consoles to do so because we talk with them directly. Okay. So what's new in Cloud Center Suite 5.0 that's just been recently released in the past uh, year? Workload Manager is existing. If you have any, any uh, sense or know about Cloud Center, Workflow Manager is what is, I just showed you is that, in that screenshot. But now we have the addition of Cost Optimizer, which provides public and private cloud cost visibility. In other words, if you're familiar with AWS, for example, and their cost model for deploying your applications on EC2, you can take that same cost model and bring it into Cloud Center. Why is this important? When you're doing work uh, with your DevOps folks and you want to find out what is it going to cost for what you want to deploy and put it on AWS, well, in your own private cloud, using the same sort of infrastructure, the same cloud provision with Kubernetes in the back end, you're able to deploy this out and cost out how much CPU, how much memory, how long is it going to take to run, what the cost will be if I, if I decide to make it a production value thing and move it into the cloud, into AWS. Gives you kind of a preview of that, that regard. Action Orchestrator enables you to do workflow processes. Now, this is a very exciting tool these days because you're able to not only build out your profile for your applications, but you can be very specific as to, I have very strict requirements on, uh, let's say, your SSH uh, key production, what versions you can use. You can tell it to the very minute, once it's been deployed, what I want done to it so that it's further enhanced for my uh, company's needs. And of course, the suite admin now puts, will have additional uh, microservices as part of this, this setup in the future, but you'll have a uh, admin suite now that will administer all the modules, manage the tenancy, as well as licensing, logging, and RBAC control and authentication, all from the one suite window, okay? So here's the other one that we have is the Cisco Container Platform. Those of you who have been here for a little while now have heard that term over and over again. So this is what I will term Kubernetes in a box. So here are the challenges that we've had in the past that I've had with customers. They tell me, listen, we know about Kubernetes. We've heard about it. We want to get in on it. But the problem is I don't have the people with the skill set that can deploy this thing from scratch. So what we end up doing is saying, well, we'll help you with that. We build a platform that once deployed, you will be able to, you'll have a control plane that will let you build out tenant clusters from that control plane. So you can see on the left-hand side, this is your control plane Kubernetes. It gives you an interface that says that from this point, once I have that involved, I can then build out my tenant clusters and have, on to the right-hand side will be everything that you see on that screen, right? So we have best of breed on there. We'll have Prometheus, FluentD, uh, Kibana, Grafana, it's all included with every single tenant that you build from this point forward without having to worry about putting in pure Kubernetes and then having to after install everything else that you want. We already include it out of the box, including the dashboard. Okay, that usually you have to add after the fact. In this model, you'll see that we're talking specifically a lot of the Cisco gear, right? But this actually does work on other platforms. So here's our solution for Kubernetes on AWS. On the left-hand side, we're talking again about your on-premise environment where you're running container platform, Cisco container platform, and you give it your IAM information from AWS. That's all you need. That's your, at least your mandatory in order for this to work. Once you have that connectivity built, you're able to start building out your tenants and you can tell the tenant to go and build it out on AWS for me, and you'll be able to view it and monitor it and manage it from your, that one interface. Everything else is optional. We can see we have a Cisco uh, CSR virtual router that you can build and have access uh, across, the, across the interface. 
Then you have on top of that Cloud Center, which I described to you, being able to pull out a, a interface that you can deploy applications from, and it lands and sits on top of that. Then you'll have things like StealthWatch or Cloud and App Dynamics. All these tools are available as options, but at the same time, when you just want this, this connectivity between AWS and uh, cloud, uh, the container platform and your on-premise uh, system, this is what you need. That's all you need to get it up and running. For Google, it's a little bit different, only because you have to have something from Google on your on-prem site, right, which is Apigee. And on the Google Cloud side, you need to have the open service broker. Other than that, that's all you need. Everything else is optional. You guys are probably familiar now with Itzio. It's another Google product, but it's a service mesh uh, system that allows you to be able to do things such as my web interface is getting hit pretty hard. I need to have additional resources and containers spun up. When it reaches a certain threshold, it'll bring up as many as necessary what you've given it. And when that threshold is lowered, it'll bring it down and shut them all down. Right? Because it does cost money when these are being run, if you have your web tier running on Google Cloud or AWS, for example. Right? This is what Cisco provides. We cover the entire stack from top to bottom. Our hardware, if you use our hardware, if not, we'll work with you, whatever vendor, whether it's Dell, whether it's HP, doesn't matter. Uh, you, you can see the next layer after that is InterSight, this is all things that are related directly to uh, managing our UCS product line for servers. After that, you'll see all the various components that you can add to it and this entire stack. And as you can see, that's for multi-cloud portfolio, then you can go down to cloud, SAP if you need it, as well as for uh, AWS. Now the interesting thing that when I gave my, my uh, initial uh, synopsis as to giving this talk, was the challenges that some customers have where they have a IT department that their DevOps people are trying to move at the speed of light, trying to get things deployed. So what ends up happening is they make a request to IT. IT says, well, it's gonna take me about two months to acquire the hardware, to get whatever done, and it takes too long. So what does DevOps do? Swipe our credit card and get a, a Kubernetes cluster run up on AWS and use that. Now all of a sudden, IT and ops are no longer talking to each other, and you have two different things running at the same time. What we're providing you with this sort of a stack is to bring a way for IT and ops to get along together again, okay? You are able to use Container Platform and Cisco Cloud Center, for example, be able to provide them with the same services they would get from AWS, but also give them the ability to push things out to the cloud if you use your internal data set. So at the end of the day, in conclusion for this, you become Oprah, okay? You get Kubernetes, everybody gets Kubernetes at the end of the day. And that's what I have for today. Any questions? I expect some hands to pop up by now. I'll come to you. Okay, you can visit us in the, oh, there's one right here, right in the front. Thank you, Devan Adams from IHS Market. So, you spoke specifically about you know having the capability to use um, your solution across various other vendor products. Um, do you have any details that you could provide us with respect to any performance differences that say could be established between using a, a Dell or HP? Um, hardware versus using Cisco hardware. Um, are there any particular advantages or disadvantages to that? Well, yeah, as you can imagine, Cisco is of course gonna test with our own hardware. We're gonna be able to give our reference architecture that specifically talks to our hardware. But that being said, we're trying to play nice with everybody these days. So there is, has been some work being done internally to work with other vendors to figure out what are at least the minimum specifications needed for performance, at least to meet and be able to put out something like Container Platform or uh, Cloud Center, or to move this entire solution. But as far as very specific stuff, if you look at our uh, any of the applications, 
uh, minimum requirements, as long as you meet those, whether it's number of CPUs, number, how much memory you're going to need, if you can meet that, then you're pretty much on target, right? But other than that, you know, you can imagine they are a competitor of ours. So, but this this is a uh, not a place that we're going to buy their hardware and validate it and test it for them, all right? So that's one of those things where. You know, we try to do the best that we can based on the customer base and the customers that are asking us to help do that. We'll work with them on that from a customer experience perspective. Anyone else? Excellent. Thank you very much, and have a great, great, day, great day. Thanks, everybody. Um, if there are more questions that come up, Miguel will be down in the Cisco booth, booth A9 down in the marketplace. Come down and visit us um, and ask questions. Thanks. We have one more session coming up in about, I think it's at 420. Yeah. Right. So come back. We have one more session at 420. Miguel, thank you very much.